with like Word and Excel than they do with their spouse, which is sad, but it also shows that this emotional relationship is, is important. It's something that you spend many hours of your day with. And so we wanted to see how people reacted to Office in their natural habitat, in their workplace, in their home. Um, we ended up amassing 10,000 hours of video of people using Office, people ranting to us. Uh, reality show TV where people came up to the camera and, and said their rants to us. And what we wanted to know is how people felt when they used Office. And all of this data that we amassed ended up getting condensed into something that we call the fish. What's the fish? Well, this is the fish. And we call it the fish because it looks sort of like a fish skeleton. And this is a simplified version of it. But what it attempted to do was take the different sort of indicators that showed when people were unhappy with Office, while they were, why they were unhappy. And I'm going to zoom in on the upper left-hand corner, which is called access and use of functionality all the time, which is this part. But you can see we also have you know, people want to feel like they're in control of Office. People want to learn new functionality. And you can see the different importances of those things. But if I zoom into this quadrant, access and use functionality, um, you can see the kinds of things that contribute to this. Things like, I know I've done this before, but I don't remember how, contributes 21% to, to people being dissatisfied in this way. Um, the organization of commands changes randomly. That has a 7% effect. And you can see the kinds of quotes that we got. So the fish was our way of taking all of this data and trying to formulate an idea of which were the kinds of things that really annoyed people and which were the things that, that didn't annoy them as much. And the revelation that we got from all this data was that the sense of mastery of our products was totally gone. That people didn't feel that sense of mastery. What do I mean by sense of mastery? Well, sense of mastery is the feeling that you get when you use a piece of software and you sort of understand what it's capable of. So start with Notepad, right? It's pretty easy to have a sense of mastery of Notepad. It only has five menus. Some of those menus only have like three things on them. So even if you can't recite all of the features that are in Notepad, I bet you feel pretty confident that you could form an opinion of all the things that are in Notepad. Similarly, the search box in the browser. Although we all know that, that you know, the, the search usually can take you to different kinds of features like maps and news, very simple to use, and you feel like you pretty much have an understanding of how you'd get to the additional functionality. You feel like you're the master of it. And early versions of Word and Office you could have a sense of mastery of. Every toolbar button was also in a menu. And there were only seven menus, and each of them only had a few things on them. You have that sense of mastery. You control the software. And then there's this. It's really hard to feel a sense of mastery for this. Where do you even look for commands? In the menus, in the toolbars, in the menu of toolbars that you haven't brought up yet, in the task panes, in the list of task panes, just impossible to build a sense of, of mastery of this software. And so one of the reasons that we did the ribbon was so that you had a clear path to click across the top and, and see where all the commands were. There was only one home for commands. That's what we meant by, by sense of mastery. So that's the art part of it. And then there's the science part of it. So we have this thing that we internally call SQM, SQM, but you may have heard of as the uh, Customer Experience Improvement Program. And this is a little balloon that pops up that says, hey, do you want to help make Microsoft products better? Um, we sort of started doing this a lot of years ago, but now almost all the Microsoft and, in fact, other companies are doing this as well. But this is, if you opt in, we collect anonymous, uh, non-personally identifiable data that tells us how you use Office. We've gotten over 3 billion sessions of data so far from Office users. Uh, we've collected about 2 million sessions a day. And we collect 6,000 data points. And a data point is like, what are all the commands you've clicked in a day? That's one data point. We have 6,000 of those. How long is your average document? How many emails do you have? How many of those do you delete? How many folders do you have? We have all of this kind of information. And in the old days of doing feature design at Microsoft, Here's sort of how it would work. We're doing user interface design. Well, I think pivot charts are really important. And everyone that has pivot charts needs to uh, be able to you know, delete this row uh, at, at the top level. And someone else says, that's not true. No one needs to delete, delete a row. Everyone just moves that thing to a different sheet. So you're arguing about which button should be bigger. And who wins? Well, whoever has the loudest voice 
or the most seniority or makes the most elegant argument. It's just essentially random. Now we actually know. We can tell you which one gets used more. We can tell how commands are sequenced together. So when you use uh, bold, what do you use next? When you use undo, what do you use next? We can sequence commands. We know which ones are used via the keyboard and the mouse. This little thing at the side is a heat map of the old drawing toolbar in Word. And it just is giving you an idea of which commands people use the most. The darker it's shaded, the more people use it. And the less that it's shaded, the least people use it. So now I'm going to actually show you some of the data that we actually used to help make some decisions. So let me minimize this and bring up a couple of these spreadsheets. So I'm going to start with the big mama of, of everything, something that we call the Office Apps Command List. And this is, I, I pulled it off the server, this is like one week of Office 2003 data. And this is the list of every command in Excel, Word, PowerPoint, and Outlook, just sorted by how many times it was used during this time period. Um, as you can see in, in Word, there's almost 2,000 commands. In Excel, there's 1,500 commands. And some of this a little misleading. Like here at the top of Word, you'll see that the first command is something called car right MS Word. That thing's actually pushing the right arrow on your keyboard. So Word actually collects things like right keyboard and delete and space that get sort of in here. So you have to do a little bit of tweaking. But it turns out that the number one command in all of the apps, except for Outlook, is paste. Does anyone want to guess what the number one command in Outlook is? Yeah, delete. Delete's used, you can see, uh, 14 million times. And the next most used thing is send at 1.8 million times. So delete's used 14, million, you know, 14 times more than, uh, than send is. But paste is number one in all of the apps. If you look at Word, paste shows up. Um, the next one is save, that you think of as a command, then copy, um, and then undo, and then bold. Down here, you can see some other stuff like uh, close shows up in the middle of that. And as you go down the spreadsheet, see there's a lot of commands. And you can see some of them get used not very much. Like by the time you're down at people, commands that people click six times, five times, four times, like see what this thing is. Pyramid diagram stacked chart. So that's someone that took a stacked chart type that was copied from Excel and changed it to a pyramid diagram. Well, four people did that compared to the 14 million that hit delete. And there are commands that, that in fact, only get clicked you know, one time like change shape to lightning bolt. <laughs> One time in this time period, someone took a square and changed it to a lightning bolt. And of course, at the very bottom of this, like unknown control 32847, God only knows how someone clicked on that. We don't even know what it is. We just sort of, <laughs> we didn't put that one in the ribbon for sure. This is some other cool stuff that we can do. So here's a look at um, uh, word data and looks at commands, and it says, what percentage of the time was that clicked via the mouse or a shortcut key, like Control-B, or Accelerator, which is Alt, and then you navigate the menus with like Alt-E-V for paste. Um, and you can look at different commands and say, well, save. Well, we had the argument at the beginning of the release. You don't need to have a save button in the ribbon. That's dumb. People don't use the save button. People use Control-S. Everyone knows Control-S. Well, really, 80% of the time, it's clicked in the toolbar. Well, what about undo? What percentage of the time do people use that? Well, 70% of the time, undo is clicked with the mouse, and 30% of the time, it's used with the shortcut key. Um, even paste is only done 50% of the time with Control V, and another 50% of the time, it's done with the mouse. And then we can break this up further. When it's done by the mouse, is it the toolbar, or is it the context menu? So you can see there's a lot of subtlety and shading here that goes into sort of forming our, our idea of the UI. Here's a look at when people are using the Alt key in Excel to navigate the menus, like Alt-EV, which menus are they going to? And you find out that mostly people have memorized Edit, File, and Insert. So if there was a set of them to keep consistent between the versions, those would be the ones that you'd start with. Um, keyboard command lengths. So this was looking at every single command in the different apps and looking at how many keystrokes it took, this was an old snapshot, like pre-beta 2, how many keystrokes it took to do that with the old version and the new version, and then comparing. Well, this one 
used to take three in the old version, now it takes four in the new version. 